Hello everybody and welcome to this week's vlog. I've missed you for a few weeks, so welcome back. Um, but while I haven't been here, I have been observing my patients and uh, there has been a few things coming in. They're a bit like buses. Once you see one red bus, you get several going the same direction. And so what I'm talking about is heel pain, um, which is related to lockdown as well, because lots of you have been doing a lot of walking over the, well, the last year. Um, however, winter walking is different to summer walking. And um, those people who have been doing lots of walking in welly boots, particularly, um, the footwear is inappropriate and the foot slides around the, the welly boot too much and there is not enough support for the arch. So if you can, please wear your um, walking boots if you are going on a seriously, a serious walk rather than just round the, a quick one round the block with the dog or over a field with a dog and just let it run around. So let me just share my screen because I've got a few slides as usual. Um, plantar fasciitis. So the, what is the plantar fascia? So plantar fascia is the name of the actual muscle. The itis bit means inflammation. Um, so, oops, I didn't give you a warning. So there is a little bit of a, a dissected foot in the next slide. So anybody who is squeamish, they should look away. Um, so here we go. So what is the plantar fascia? So as we can see in our cadaver, which is the, the dissected foot, um, we've got the width of the plantar fascia and the length. So you can see it coming up into each toe and then forming a thick band under the arch and then inserting into the heel. Um, let's have a look. So here's the ankle on our bone. This bit here is our ankle bone. And then the bones of the foot and then down into the toes. And our plantar fascia starts at the bottom and comes along to the heel. Now, like any sort of muscle area, the tendon attaches the muscle to the bone. And this is a tendinous insertion. And basically when this muscle gets shortened, when you're walking and overusing your foot, um, then it pulls onto the tendon. Same as the guy, like a golfer's elbow or a tennis elbow. And then in certain circumstances, I can't speak, in certain circumstances, it actually pulls on the heel bone as well and causes a little bony spur to be pulled with the traction to be pulled out. Now that's not in all cases. Um, so basically when you wake up in the morning and you put your heel down on the floor, it is agony. And you can't really wait bare through that foot and you sort of limp and hobble around. And as you get going, activity um, helps to improve it. However, then when you sit down again, if you put your feet up five minutes after lunch, maybe, um, or if you're sitting down at the office and then you go to get up again, it's agony. So um, that's the pattern of plantar fasciitis. Now, with just going back before I leave this page, what we have coming down the back of our leg are our calf muscles. And around this point here, it turns into a, the Achilles tendon and the Achilles tendon comes down and inserts onto the heel bone as well. And so actually the fibers, some of the fibers of the plantar fascia and some of the fibers of the Achilles actually merge together. And so it's quite common to get an Achilles tendonitis or an Achilles tear going on at the same time as, as this, because all these muscles, um, so if we look at the foot, so where that hand is, that's the back of the leg all the muscles, the po they're called posterior chain muscles. So that's the back of the leg and underneath the sole of the foot there. So the, the fascia, there's coverings, like the second skin of us, the fascia, it covers the whole thing. And so if we're quite short through the, the posterior chain of our fascias, it can then shorten the muscles and then shorten under the foot because they all work together, basically. 
So what can you do about a plantar fasciitis? Well, basically it doesn't heal very quickly. Again, because it's got obviously tendon issues have reasonably poor blood supply, so they take a little time to heal. Um, so you're not looking at a week or two and getting better. It takes months to sort out. So what you can do at home to help is you can massage the sole of the foot, get the blood flow going into that area. You can use your hands, you can use a spiky ball, you can use a tennis ball, a golf ball, a rolling pin. So every day you can massage the foot. Um, you can ice the area that's inflamed. Sorry, you have my bird now <laughs> looking at you through the camera. Um, you can ice the um, sole of the foot. So no more than 10 minutes. 10 minutes is really effective for icing. After that, it, you know, you don't really want to do it for too long. Um, there are certain stretches you can do for the, for the plantar fascia and the calf muscles. You want to cut down any excessive walking. So keep your walking to a minimum while you're in agony. And you need to look at your footwear. So you need to change your uh, shoes. You want something with a nice um, thick sole that's cushioned. So something like a trainer, um, uh, rather than like a belly pump or something with a very thin sole. Now, don't worry about the massage and the stretches because next week's vlog, I will be showing you exactly what to do. So wait a week and I will explain everything. Now, obviously, as osteopaths, we will work through the muscles in the calf, the Achilles, the ankle bone, the bones of the foot, the plantar fascia. We can even put little acupuncture needles in the plantar fascia to help release it a bit as well. Not the most pleasant thing for those who've had it. Um, but we don't have to do that necessarily. If you're really needle averse, we can do lots of massage, but it's getting the mechanics working back in your foot, your leg, your knee, your hip, your pelvis. Sometimes people can have quite an imbalance in their gait so that they weight bear through one foot more than the other. So we look at all that. And then because they're notoriously quite stubborn, you have a little tail. <laughs> um, we have other treatments. So you can have orthotics. Be around. That's marble, by the way. Um, you can have orthotics made for you. We can do some at the practice. Um, they are heat molded. So they are then fitted to your foot and over the counter ones um, and not fitted for your foot, they're just an arch um, created by a machine. Um, or you can go and have some bespoke ones made by a podiatrist as well. Um, and also we offer what we call shockwave therapy or extracorporeal shockwave therapy, which is a sound wave that is directed into the tendon to stimulate healing within the tendon. Now these are nice guidelines for tendon issues, um, especially for plantar fasciitis, it's shown to work um, and it's best done with the exercises that you will be given from us too. Um, if you did want to do the shockwave therapy, it you will need sort of three weekly appointments. Sometimes it may need, um, <laughs> never work with animals. Um, it may need another session as well because sometimes plantar fasciitis can be quite stubborn however you know if you're in more interested in the shockwave therapy um you can always just phone and have a chat with us anyway about it because it doesn't just do the plantar fascia it also does the um any tender shoulder tendons hip tendons um as well as well as the achilles too so it's a very interesting um, therapy. We have an amazing machine. Have a very, there are lots of different types of machine. There are very cheap ones on the market. This one is um, one of the top ones that you can buy. Um, so very effective for tendons. You can also go um, via the NHS and have an injection, but 
sadly, injections, steroid injections cause tissue death. So I know which one I would prefer to have. I want to stimulate healing within my body, not cause issues down the line. And like with golfers and tennis elbow, um, they, are, they are sort of coming away from doing these sort of steroid injections now because they might help initially, but actually in the long term, they don't see that much difference with having them done. So, um, so that's a little bit about steroid injections. So next week, I will show you some um, exercises and massage that you can do at home to help the plantar fasciitis. So hopefully you have enjoyed today. So uh, I'm gonna just stop the screen share. And uh, from on my bird marble and myself, I hope you have a good week and I will see you next week. You take care, bye-bye.